Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. This video is going to be all about cranial nerve 4, which is the trochlear nerve. The trochlear nerve is one of three nerves that has control over the extrinsic eye muscles, the other two being the abducens nerve, which will be the next video, and the oculomotor nerve, which was the previous two videos. The oculomotor nerve is fairly complicated. It has a lot of functions, controls several of the extrinsic eye muscles, and also has some parasympathetic functions. That's summarized over here on the right. On the left, here's the trochlear nerve, and you'll find that this pathway and function is way simpler than the oculomotor nerve. So let's go into it. Now, one of the similarities between the trochlear nerve and the oculomotor nerve is they both originate in the midbrain of the brainstem. In fact, these are the only two cranial nerves that originate from the midbrain. Uh, if we look back over here from the previous video, we can tell this is a cross section of the midbrain because we have the paraqueductal gray matter here. We also have the red nuclei on either side. You'll notice here that for the trochlear nerve, we don't actually see the red nuclei. And that's actually because this is a different cross section of the midbrain. It turns out the trochlear nerve actually originates in the midbrain a little bit inferiorly to the origin of the oculomotor nerve over here. And so we're kind of out of the plane of the red nuclei, but we can still see that paraaqueductal gray matter here. Now right here, these are the trochlear nuclei, very closely associated with that paraaqueductal gray matter. But there's a big difference here. Notice that when we look at, let's say, this left trochlear nucleus, the axon that comes out of that doesn't stay on the same side. It actually loops around the paraqueductal gray matter and goes to the contralateral side. Whereas if we look here at the oculomotor nucleus, the axons that come out of that actually stay on the same side. So that's a big difference. So we're looking here at, let's say, the right eyeball. So we're going to focus here on the left trochlear nucleus. So we follow the trochlear nerve that comes off of that. It's going to loop around paraaqueductal gray matter and exit posteriorly from the midbrain and actually loop around the entirety of the other half of the midbrain, as you see right here. Now here's another similarity. Notice that it's still going over the superior cerebellar artery, just like we see here for the oculomotor nerve, and then it goes under the posterior cerebral artery, just like over here. But you'll notice that for the oculomotor nerve, it's a little bit more medially where it goes between them. For the trochlear nerve, it's a little bit more laterally where it goes between them. But in any case, it's still going to come over here and enter that cavernous sinus right here, which is a tunnel within the sphenoid bone. So it's going to enter that. And then it's going to exit the cavernous sinus. And then it's going to go here to the superior orbital fissure. Remember, the superior orbital fissure is kind of a hole in the sphenoid bone that allows things to go into the orbit where the eyeball is. Now, as soon as the trochlear nerve moves through the superior orbital fissure and enters the orbit, it's going to come in contact with this. This is the levator palpebrae superioris. That's the muscle that's going to elevate the eyelid. Well, you'll notice here it's going to cross posteriorly. It's going to move behind that muscle and then kind of loop back around here immediately where it's then going to innervate this muscle. This is the superior oblique muscle. This is the only muscle that is innervated by the trochlear nerve. So that's pretty simple, right? Well, let's take a look at that superior oblique muscle and see what it does. Here's our six extrinsic eye muscles down here. The middle four were all innervated by the oculomotor nerve. We covered that two videos ago. And then down at the bottom is our superior oblique muscle. Remember, it depresses the eye and turns it a little bit laterally. Now, in the picture over here, this is a lateral view of the right eye. Here at the top, this is the superior oblique muscle. Now, this is a unique muscle here because look at what it's doing over here with its tendon. So we see the tendinous part of the superior oblique muscle, and then it seems to loop around this little hook right here. There's a hook that's actually suspended from the top of the orbit right here. This little hook is called the trochlea. And so the tendon kind of loops through that hook, through that trochlea, and then comes down here and attaches on the sclera of the eye, actually a little bit medially to the superior rectus muscle. You can't see where it's actually attaching. 
But this trochlea allows this muscle to have a pulley system because without that pulley, it would not be in a position where it could have these actions. And so by looping around here, when the muscle pulls, this trochlea actually uses a pulley system to redirect the direction of the pull of this muscle. And so it allows it to depress the eye and turn it a little bit laterally. You can't see the actual muscle belly here, but you can actually see approximately where the superior oblique is going to attach on the sclera. And then you can see it actually looping around here, and the muscle belly would actually be kind of like this. But that hook is the trochlea. And that's actually why this nerve is termed the trochlear nerve, in case you didn't know. The trochlea itself is the pulley that redirects the line of pull of the muscle, okay, the superior oblique muscle. So that's all the trochlear nerve does. It's a purely motor nerve that innervates this muscle and this muscle alone. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the trochlear nerve and the anatomy and function of the superior oblique muscle. In the next video, we're going to move on to the abducens nerve, even though the trigeminal nerve is number five, and we're going to finish up the last nerve that innervates an extrinsic eye muscle. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.